So the third question is related to screening for Down syndrome. Which of the following statements is true of antenatal screening for Down syndrome? So in the UK, Down syndrome screening is only offered to women over 35 years of age. At the age of 40, the risk of the mother having a fetus affected by Down syndrome is twice as high as at age 30 years. Measurement of nuchal cord thickness at 11 to 13 weeks offers a diagnostic test for Down syndrome. Amniocentesis offers a diagnostic test for Down syndrome but carries a small risk of miscarriage. The neonatal screening test performed after the baby is born will detect if the baby has Down syndrome. So please pause your slide, think of your answer and give you a few seconds. I'm moving to the next slide. I hope you have chosen. If you have not chosen, please pause. So the correct answer is amniocentesis offers a diagnostic test for Down syndrome but carries a small risk of miscarriage. So this is the correct answer. In the UK, Down syndrome screening is only offered to women over 35 years. So this statement is wrong. It's offered to women of all ages since numerically more Down syndrome babies are born to younger mothers. So the age-related risk is not high, but the younger mothers are the bigger population who deliver babies. So between 25 to 30 years is when most of the mothers deliver these days. And that is the age group because the numbers of babies are more. That's the group where the Down syndrome happens. So the individual risk increases with maternal age, but the population screening is for all pregnant women. So at the age of 40, the risk of having a fetus affected by Down syndrome is twice as high. It's incorrect again. The risk is eightfold. So it's one in 880 at 30 years compared to one in 100 at 40 years. Measurement of nuchal cord thickness at 11 to 13 weeks is a diagnostic test. So it's not a diagnostic test. It's one of the screening tests as we will discuss in the further slides. We discussed the amniocentesis part, which is a diagnostic test. So the cells can be cultured and chromosomal analysis performed from the amniocentesis. So it's a diagnostic test and the rapid results are available within 48 hours. The other diagnostic test is the choroid I mean the chorionic villus sampling, which can happen between 11 and 13 weeks. And nowadays we have studies of uh, genetic studies based on the maternal blood sample, which is even done before 10 weeks. The neonatal screening test performed after the baby is born will detect if the baby has Down syndrome. So this is again incorrect. The newborn screening is more for metabolic problems. Uh, you can review my video on newborn screening as well. So the age rated risk of Down syndrome is clearly illustrated here. The risk of genetic problems as a whole is mentioned here as well. So it's about 1 in uh, 1500 to 2000 in the younger mothers and it keeps dropping with age. The recent age uh, results in an increased risk is because of the meiotic non-disjunction risk increasing. The rates of non-disjunction during meiosis increases when the uh, mother's age increases and that's why the risk of trisomies in general increases as the mother gets older. So at 30 years, it's 1 in 950. At 35 years, it's 1 in 250. And it becomes 1 in 100 at 40 years, 1 in 63 at 42 and as high as 1 in 30 at 45 years. So beyond 35 years, doing the uh, risk factor assessment based on the screening tests uh, is not going to make much difference because the endpoint of the screening test for Down syndrome is a risk of more than 1 in 250, which is reached at 35 years. So the screening really helps only in the younger mothers. The older mothers, you may offer a diagnostic test straight away based on the ultrasound findings if there is any concern. The blood test based uh, screening is not really going to add much. Of course, uh, if the score becomes even lower, your risk is higher, so you would do it. That depends on the parent's choice. Sometimes the uh, use of the antenatal screening measures depends on what the parental decision would be. So sometimes you have a religious reason for not doing miscarriage uh, or abortion. So you would decide that whatever happens, we will face it. So that's another factor that has to be considered. So we have the test for Down syndrome screening tests and diagnostic tests. The screening test includes a biochemical test, which is uh, in the first trimester, uh, triple test, and in the second trimester, the quadruple test. And the ultrasound scan between 11 to 13 weeks, where we look at the nasal bone as well as the nuchal translucency. This gives you a risk factor profile, and you add that to the age-related risk factor profile, and then you decide whether you want a diagnostic test. As I said, if the age itself is significantly high, uh, you can go for the diagnostic test even directly. And as I said, these are the two main, the chorionicular sampling and the amniocentesis, depending on the timing. 
but we also have earlier test based on the genetic test in the mother's blood. So these are the tests which are done on the blood test. The alpha fetoprotein, as you might remember, the alpha fetoprotein is increased in neural tube defects as well as the GI anomalies like gastroschisis. Uh, but in Down syndrome, it's reduced. In Turner syndrome, it's reduced. In Edward syndrome, it's unchanged usually. And strangely, in Patov syndrome, it's increased possibly because of the associated uh, midline defects. Estriol uh, is low in Down syndrome, reduced in Turner, is reduced in Edwards, and it's normal in Patov. HCG is high in Down syndrome. Inhibin A is high in Down syndrome as well. That's why the mnemonic of high can be remembered. HCG and inhibin are increased. The Turner syndrome also, it's very high. Edwards syndrome, strangely, the HCG is very low and inhibin is unchanged. So you can... Uh, have a guess of what type of problem it is based on uh, the test results.